Choosing a good powder and charge weight for 223 Remington, or any other caliber for that matter, should be as easy as seeing what little powder choices you have to choose from, looking for load data for it, and poof, Bob's your uncle, right? Maybe that's the case, but what happens when you get to the range and find out your velocity is more than 200 feet per second slower than what your load data suggested? Why do some powders just perform better than others? Sure, some of this is going to be due to barrel length, but how are you to know? Today we're going to look at the performance of these 10 different powders in 223 Remington, look at velocity, pressure, and see if it's anywhere close to what we expect when it comes to what our load data indicates. Step one for any load development process is to get load data. And since we're using the 77 grain Sierra Match King, we're going to have lots of choices. Primarily, we'll be looking at our Sierra manual, Hodgkin's website, as well as Alliance website. I picked these 10 different powders that I had in my stockpile of things to test. Two others we could have tested were TAC and RMIR4064, maybe another day, but this data set is pretty large as it is. If we look at our powder burn rate chart, the fastest powder we're going to be testing is Hodgkin's benchmark, and the slowest is the newer Stayball 6.5. I don't want to go too far into burn rate in this video, but when we look at our load data, typically a max load is determined by either the max pressure our case can handle or the amount of powder that can fit inside the case, or in some cases, a combination of both. The test platform we'll be using today has an 18 inch white oak armament barrel. So shorter than most of the load data examples we'll be basing our load off of. We're going to lose some velocity due to barrel length. The velocity of our test rounds will be measured with a lab radar, as well as the pressure data will be measured with a pressure trace 2 system. The standard disclaimer here is the pressure data I have is corrected to the best I know how to do at this moment, but we'll be using it for comparative data only, not as an excuse to start exceeding the low data that we find. Also, we're going to be comparing 7 of the 10 powders only when it comes to pressure, but we'll get into that a little later in the video. To make the data a little easier to digest, I've created an Excel chart here. There could be a typo, so please validate with your own load data sources. When it comes to our load data, Sierra has two platforms for which they list load data, one with a 20 inch barrel and one with a 24. One interesting point is that the data for the bolt platform tends to be always more conservative than the other. You can compare the data to your cart's content, but the far right column has the max charge we're going to be testing today. We're going to be testing 10 different charges with each powder, and we're going to be backing down from max 1.8 grains and working up in 0.2 grain increments looking for pressure signs along the way. Some other details of our load today, we're going to be using PMC previously fired brass, CCI 41 primers, and the 77 grain Sierra Match King loaded to 2.260 inches. Like I mentioned before, some of our data is likely limited by the pressure and some by the case volume. I seeded all 100 rounds for today's test on my amp press, and looking at the seating force required, we can see that some of these charges are compressed. Typically, our load data sources will highlight if a charge is compressed, by looking at our force graphs, we can confirm that H4895, Varget, and Stayball 6.5 are certainly compressed. In fact, Stayball 6.5 shows increased seeding force for the final hundred thousandths of its seeding process. Now, IMR4166, as well as AR Comp, are just starting to show signs of increased seeding force at their max charge weights, so those I'm not concerned with at all. You might wonder why would we care about this? Well, the short answer is, you may not care. But just know that as your rounds sit, they may tend to grow in length slightly because the seating force being applied by the powder inside the case. We can certainly graph all these velocities on the same chart, but it tends to get a little messy. So I put these up on their own individual chart because I think they're easier to compare when they're on the same screen, but you can still see all the data points clearly. These graphs may have turned out a little bit better had I used more consistent brass, but I think it paints a pretty clear picture. Overall, consistency was pretty good. It certainly looks like there's some potential for some velocity plateaus to explore. And it doesn't look like the CCI-41 struggled to ignite any of the powders we tested. But if we look at our expected load data, there are certainly some winners and certainly some losers. While velocity certainly is not everything when it comes to load development, it is something we should consider. When it comes to velocity, our best performer was H4895, and our worst was IMR4166. Looking at the velocity potential of our load data, it looked like CFE223 as well as BLC2 should have been top performers. However, it wasn't the case, as they came in 7th and 9th. 7 of our 10 powders were able to achieve 2600 feet per second or above, but at what pressure did it take to do it? We can graph our 7 options for peak pressure and compare them, but for ease of comparison, let's chart them instead. We can look at the chart and see that some of them are more consistent than others, and also it's clear that some of the velocity we saw with H4895 was certainly at the cost of extra pressure. Keep in mind, this data is for comparative purposes only. 
but most of our max pressures were pretty close to that 55,000 max PSI for 223 Remington. It was interesting to me that Accurate 2520 was able to produce some of the best velocities, but at the lowest average pressure of all of the powders tested. Looking at the pressure data for Accurate 2520, it's clear how some people are getting away with loading over max published charge weights. When it comes to velocity string tests, I really don't like looking at the group sizes, especially with an extreme spread of more than 250 feet per second in some of our rounds tested, but we will touch on them in just a second. Now the elephant in the room is why is there no pressure for these other three powders? The shortest version I can say is that these powders have a very high secondary pressure event and I have not figured out what to do with the data. For example, here is a good chart from our benchmark test. This is a pressure chart averaged from all 10 tests. It has a nice single peak pressure event, everything we could hope for. As our powders get slower on the burn rate chart, especially ball powders, they start having these secondary pressure events. This is a chart for AR comp. While I don't think that it makes it bad, you can see that this chart has a secondary pressure event, even though the velocity responses here were very good and consistent. BLC2 on the other hand is kind of all over the place, and sometimes the highest pressures are recorded on the second peak and sometimes on the first. Another example of this is CFE223. Now I'm not here to tell you to stop using CFE223, but at this time I'm not sure what to do with these numbers. This load showed no excessive pressure signs in the brass, but clearly has a much different burn profile than the rest of the other powders. You may wonder then, what about Accurate 2520? We showed data for that. Now while certainly Accurate 2520 has a secondary pressure event, it's much smaller than the primary. And this particular graph has a lot of area under the curve, and that's likely how it's able to attain such good velocity while keeping reasonable pressures. Stayball 6.5 had a high secondary pressure event as well, but all things considered, it wasn't impressive when it came to velocity we could obtain, the loads were compressed, and frankly, it seemed to burn really dirty. As far as accuracy is concerned with these 10 powders, this style of test probably isn't a fair judge of how capable one powder is compared to another. But our best group was with the 828 XBR, just over an MOA, and the worst powder was JRB's favorite, BLC2, at 1.9 MOA. Load development isn't all about testing powder. What happens when we change primers? What happens to our load then? Check out this video right here where I test 9 different primers with AR comp to see how it affects both the velocity and pressure of the load. And until next week, stay safe in small groups.